Good afternoon, folks, and thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Wheaton with MMA Sucker, and today joining us, I'm so excited to have Luis Tavares on the show. Luis, how you doing today, sir? Uh, I'm fine, man. How are you, actually? Hanging out. You know me. You know how it goes. So coming up, Glory 81 <laughs> on August 20th, you're going to be fighting for the vacant light heavyweight championship against Sergei Maslaboyev. Tell me, how is the yep. training coming along? What's the strategy coming in? Give, give, Bring us up to date on everything here. Uh, well, I'm not going to give the strategy away, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, the, the training camp is going like I wanted it to go. Uh, it's going well. Um, I'm confident. I'm in good spirits. Um, yeah. So I'm basically, I can't wait until it's uh, 20th August so I can uh, pick up uh, the world title. <laughs> no, absolutely exciting time. This is kind of the, this is, you were booked against Vakatov last year. Yeah. And that was part yeah. of your revenge. Oh, this year. Or... oh this that year, was that was earlier this year still. Oh man, time moves yeah. weird, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, uh, but you were the is. one who took the stand <laughs> and saying, "I'm not going to fight Vakatov." Is that still a fight that you want to get down in the future against this man? Uh, of course, of course. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know. It's nothing personal against Vakatov. It's just the circumstances, uh, how they are in the world right now. So uh, I took the decision, and there were a lot of uh, uncertainties. Uh, happening uh yeah not in front of the cover so yeah that's why i took the stance and uh you know nothing personal against him but i still want to get my revenge you know he's uh yeah he's one of the top fighters in the world so uh maybe uh we can do it in the future so oh absolutely you were on a revenge yeah. tour like you've been avenging losses <laughs> in the last couple of fights you've got a really yeah. good string what did something change in training? Did something change mentally? And now you're on a, a, an incredible win streak here. What, what, what's going on? Uh, well, uh, I joined the Avengers. <laughs> 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 so, Tell, us be, more. Uh, Tell me everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, to be uh, to be honest, uh, I always I always have a long win uh, win streak. You know, uh, if you look at my career, I, I always have six or seven fight winning streaks, and then I lose one. Uh, so I don't lose that often, but uh, it kind of it kind of went like uh, my last two, uh, two opponents were were uh, were losses, so I could avenge them. Uh, that that was good. Uh, Fakita was supposed to be the third in a row, so but uh, yeah, things stepped in the way, uh, you know. So that that uh, didn't went through. But um, the thing is, with where I'm at now, you know, I'm getting older, more experienced. Uh, there is more belief uh then in, in my in my skills than than there was before not that not that not not that i lack belief but uh you know with the years with the experience with the confidence uh there's more belief uh there comes more belief in your in your skill set so i think that has changed the mindset the consciousness actually yeah Oh, absolutely. And it really shows in your fighting. I mean, you look confident. You're an extremely talented fighter as well. So Thank it's you. great to see. And coming up, Glory 81 yeah. for the vacant light heavyweight championship, Sergey Maslaboyev. Sergey's a tough fight for anyone. Like, he's a frustrating fighter to fight against. <laughs> what kind of, like, what's the plan of fighting a fighter like that? Uh, you know, uh, like you said, he's a he's a tough fighter. He's, uh, uh, you know, he belongs near the top of the world in, the, in my division. Um, he's been winning his fights yeah, he's he's been on eleven fight win streak, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I see a couple of things in this in this game that I uh, like to explore. You know, um, yeah. First and foremost, he's a he's a very complete fighter. Uh, likes to likes to pull, likes to put on the pressure on his opponents. But but in those when he does that, there's a little things. Uh, in my opinion, he forgets. So uh, I'm I'm willing to exploit that. I'm not going to give it away right now, but <laughs> or else you would know. But there's some little there's some little things uh, I see that that he has in his game. He has a little bit holes when he's pressuring people, and uh, nobody has exploited that yet as of yet. Uh, but uh, you know I'm a very tactical fighter, so I'll, I'm willing to do that. So um, we will see how it goes. But I'm I'm confident that I'll pull out the victory. What's always struck me about you is that you you're always such a respectful fighter, and your opponent's very respectful as well. Yeah. But most of your fights, there's very little to no trash talk at all. Is this something you're not <laughs> interested in, or are you just like a, yeah. a grown man? You're not gonna do any of that anymore. Uh, well, early in my career, I used to be very uh, outspoken. Now, you know, um, 
it comes with the opponent. Uh, mm. For instance, uh, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a, how do you say, it's not a, I'm just, wait a minute. <laughs> no, it's well. not, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not a, a secret that I don't like, that I don't like Abena. <laughs> you know, yeah. we've been, we've been uh, trash talking a lot. Uh, but with Maslow Boyev is different. I, I respect this. I respect him as a man and as a fighter. But that does not take away that um, the 20th of August. I'm willing to, uh, yeah, to, to kick his ass. You know what I'm saying? I want that. I want that belt. So, um, yeah, when the bell rings, uh, all the respect is out the window. And the same goes for him. Uh, he's coming to. Uh, he's coming to beat my ass, and <laughs> I'm coming to beat his. So. Uh, so when the bell goes, it's uh, no respect there. But after the fight, you know, we can be uh, we can be buddies again. But uh, yeah, it's, it's basically like that. Like I'll put it. Yeah. Man, that is uh, it's great to hear. Just being respectful. It's it's very yeah. basis of martial arts is being respectful and honorable to your opponents, right? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, uh, it, it it's a uh, it's a respectable sport. You know, uh, they put their life on the line just like I do. Um, they train hard, so in that regard, uh, they have my respect. But the thing is, you know, not not uh, not every person, uh, uh, yeah, you have a fun member, you have a fun relationship with. Like for instance, like I said earlier, yeah, there's a lot of guys in my division I really don't like. So, <laughs> so when I fight those guys, so when I fight those guys, I I definitely will be uh, a lot uh, more vocal. But uh, with uh, with with Muscle Boy F, yeah, yeah, we've been following each other on Instagram. Uh, so the you know the relationship is different that might change though i don't know <laughs> how you will prepare you know uh for this fight you know uh it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a world title that's that's up for grabs so uh you know how uh how things will go it's a big deal it's a big deal man and speaking of uh fighting with honor and respect <laughs> you and i went through a, a strange experience together at glory 80. so i remember yeah. there was like a hundred people running this way and i turned around and I thought, yeah. man, if Luis Tavares is going away from something, I'm going with Luis Tavares. <laughs> what was he? What do you remember from Glory Eighty? Because from where you and I were, we couldn't see anything. We just saw like a hundred people running away, right? Like, what do you remember from this weird night? Well, actually, when I entered uh, the venue, uh, it was a very strange. Uh, uh, it was. Yeah, it was. It, it was already very strange. So I thought, you know. Um, let's see how it goes and when butter when butter came up and uh Russia came up yeah uh, yeah it, it it completely went wrong so uh yeah you saw a lot of guys wanting a lot of riots it's very sad to see uh you know uh, glory does such a wonderful job to prevent those kinds of things so mm -hmm. it's uh, very sad to see that it happened but uh yeah i i was just uh be I, I just kept it real i just i didn't want no part of it so i i just i just went for safety you know <laughs> to no, be no, honest with you <laughs> no, same, exactly. i'm not gonna mess around with whatever was going on i'm, I'm getting yeah, away yeah of that. course of course you know if trouble finds me i will respond but it didn't so uh i just uh, i just uh you know, I just uh, ran for safety. Actually, <laughs> did the smart thing. <laughs> All right, so let's let's we we know you from, from kickboxing. Let's round you out as a person. You started in in football and switched to kickboxing. Am I wrong in that? Yeah, you're you're right. You're right. I started footballing when I was like five, six years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I had talent. Uh, I played with a lot of. Uh, great talent of my generation who all became a professional soccer players mm -hmm. but uh yeah you know i had more love for uh, for martial arts so uh, i switched to uh, i switched to kickboxing actually yeah. hey, and we're grateful for it it's been wonderful to watch as well <laughs> you know I, I, I might be wrong in this one you're a big fan of the power rangers uh who told you that <laughs> <laughs> It depends if it's true or not. Is that true? <laughs> well, I used to watch Power Rangers as a little as a little uh, child. Okay. I, I grew up. I grew up watching Power Rangers, but not that I'm like a very uh, big big fan. But when I was when I was a small kid, uh, every every time it was on the TV, I was watching Power Rangers for sure. <laughs> so, not, not anymore though. The new movie yeah. is not really your thing. And no, no, no. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the original uh, Power Rangers. I'm, I was a big fan of that. It's just yeah. like uh, growing up with that. Uh, and maybe that sparked a little bit of my uh, fighting interest. So maybe that, maybe that it is. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you and I grew up on like Power Rangers and really cool anime of that time. I think a lot of that yeah. stuff pushed 
kind of into watching more martial arts and finding out about this kind of stuff. Am I wrong in, in that? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is actually. Well, it's basically that and Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that, had, <laughs> that had a big influence too. Uh, when that came on uh, on that, on, uh, on TV in the Netherlands, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, as soon as it came on, nobody nobody from my age were, were on the streets. You know, normally we're playing. And uh, as soon as that went on, we were home watching. And then after that, we discussed, we discussed what happened in the show. So, <laughs> so that was a very big, uh, big thing. <laughs> Man, it was man. It, it, Dragon Ball Z was the biggest thing. Have you watched it in the last like ten years? Because everyone says like enjoy it as a kid and don't watch it again because it hasn't aged that well. <laughs> uh, I I was watching Dragon Ball Super, the the new uh, the new uh, the new series that came up a couple uh, okay. that came on a couple of years ago. Yeah, I enjoyed that, but uh, but I'm not watching Dragon Ball Z again. It it, it took too long. I can remember when uh, when Goku fought Frieza. It took like ten uh, episodes to drop yeah. one spirit bomb. I'm not going through that again. <laughs> I don't have time anymore. I don't know how a kid. I I didn't even have time as a kid. I don't know what I was doing all day. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I can remember the, those uh, those episodes. They took too long, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and again, you were a major fan. Uh, stop me when I'm wrong. Of Tupac, correct? The the rapper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That that that's very true. Uh, well, actually, I'm I'm a big fan of hip hop in general, but uh, Tupac is like, yeah, sort of like a hero from from uh, from way back, from way back. I love love his music, love what he stood for, how how he was outspoken and everything like that. So uh, he's a big hero of mine, man. Yeah. Oh, and he's an awesome rapper as well. Who, who what Definitely other rappers the best. did you grow up? Oh, the best. <laughs> the best, of all time. Yeah, the best. What if I told you I thought Biggie was a better rapper? I can, I can, I can. It's it's arguably, <laughs> you know. Biggie was the better lyricist. Uh, uh, Biggie was the be better lyricist, but I think Pac had the better overall work, and uh, and he stood he stood for way more. You know, his lyrical contact was better, but uh, you know, Biggie was like a technical technical guy. He can he could swing over a beat, and Pac was just you know uh, all guns blazing. Let's go to the door. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I how I do it. I, I just want to get the point across. So, and and he stood for way more. So uh, so there's a difference between them. So I, I listen a lot to Biggie as well. Uh, 90s hip hop is is uh, is like a big thing for me. Uh, Mob Deep. Uh, oh yeah. Wu Tang Clan. So all those guys. <laughs> I'm a big fan of those. Uh, those guys yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that is awesome stuff those were really good rappers but i think you said something yeah. that you've talked about in sports media of yeah when we talk about greats it's not yeah. often just someone's statistics like you said biggie is probably technically the better rapper but tupac yeah. had the better story and that's what we yeah. talk about in sports like michael jordan and muhammad ali had the best story around them yeah. statistically yeah. they may have been surpassed by someone but in sports like we actually really talk about people's like what's going on around them, their stories in fights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah well, that's definitely true. And uh, even if you take it back to uh, Biggie and Pac, um, you know, when they, when they all, when most of the times you, uh, you hear the list from who's uh, the greatest rapper, I tend to, I, I tend that they forget the the story element. They always talk about the most technical. Uh, so that's a, that's a part of it, you know, but, it's it's way more than that. You have to have the full story, that, and that's why guys like uh, Muhammad Ali, Jordan, uh, yeah, you can you can call them. Those guys will be remembered, and maybe they weren't the most technical, or maybe they have surpassed. Uh, they have been surpassed because uh, yeah, you can make a good argument of uh, Floyd Mayweather's. He might be te a technical, a better fighter than Muhammad Ali, but Muhammad Ali had the better story. So, <laughs> so it's it's the overall package. It's the overall package. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely true. I completely agree with what you're laying down here. And, yeah. and let me ask you: Who were some of your biggest inspirations for getting into the sport of kickboxing? Who did you look up to? Oh, I had a lot. I had a lot uh, when I was when I was young. Of course, um, I was a big fan of the K1 days, uh, the old the old K1 days that. That actually triggered, um, yeah, me to become a kickboxer, but not in a good way because uh, because I saw uh, I saw Peter Arts uh, and Nesta Hoes knocking people out, and I thought you know uh, kickboxing practice is exactly what you see <laughs> what I saw on TV, so I was a little bit of afraid at first. You know, I was a, uh, still a young uh, still a young kid, 
but uh, I went to my first practice and I and I saw that you know it went differently, you know. So mm -hmm. that's how I got into kickboxing. But I was a big fan of of the of the early K1 days, and then after that I got a my brother bought a DVD from uh, Raymond Decker, Ramon Decker's. Uh, so uh, I started enjoying the the lighter weights as well. Uh, yeah, Ramon was a beautiful fighter to watch. Uh, his uh, technical his combination skills were second to none, even for that time. Uh, I, I still think his combination uh, will still translate uh, translate good today. Uh, but I had a lot, and uh, and the one fighter that that really stuck with me is is a French fighter, uh, Danny Bill. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I I completely <laughs> love. Actually, it's like Peter Arts, like you said. That's that's a deep cut right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Danny B was the the fighter that stuck the most with me because I'm a very big fighter. I'm a very big fan of hit and not get hit. And if you saw him fight, the way he, yeah, he he was always three steps ahead of everybody. <laughs> so I really, uh, I really like that aspect of him. And for my opinion, he he's the best uh, Muay Thai fighter, uh, foreign Muay Thai fighter that ever lived. So. Um, so he really stuck with me, and uh, I, I always been a fan of those kinds of fighters. Even if you, uh, even if you translate it to boxing, I, Floyd Mayweather, uh, Ali, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Roy Jones. I like I like the art of of hit and not get hit, and that's what and that's what you see in my fights too. <laughs> really, the beauty of the sport, fighting you know yeah. effectively, not get hit. I completely agree with you on this, but I yeah. do have a listener question. And you know what you know what the listener question is already. You going back yeah. to heavyweight at some point in your career? <laughs> oh, definitely. If uh, oh, if the good if the you know uh, first of all, I'm saying now I'm, I'm becoming champion uh, in the light heavyweight division. So uh, book that 20th of August, and after that uh, the money fights. I want the money fights, and the money fights are in the heavyweight division. To be honest, uh, so uh, I'm going I'm going after the money fights. Of course, I will defend my title, but uh, I want the money fights after that. Oh, I'd love to hear it. Let me get your predictions on a couple of things. In the main event at Glory 81, Benjamin Adegbui will face off against Jamal Ben Sadiq. What's your prediction on this one? Uh, well, actually, that's a tough one for me. I, I know both guys. I know both guys very well. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best. Um, it's 50-50. Whoever, whoever wakes up in good spirits that day will take the fight. It's a, it's a very tough fight for me. <laughs> it's a very tough fight for me. Yeah. It's a coin toss. And what about the big one? We have uh, Bada Hari in finishing the trilogy with Alistair Overeem. What do you think of this yeah. one? Uh, it's an interesting fight. You know, uh, both are in the heyday of the career, though. Uh, mm -hmm. Bada has his back against the wall. Uh, he needs to win this one. So, yeah, the big question mark is him. How he will? How will he... Uh, yeah, how will he do? Because um, you know, when your back is against the wall, he's been performing good in his fights, no, no doubt. But he's not been getting the win, and uh, you know, now I think he really wants to get the win. But with that comes uh, a lot of uncertainties too. You know, you you might rush things, you might walk on a punch. So it really, uh, it it really ha it really depends on how he shows up. If he's in good spirits, uh, if he's te uh, mentally prepared. He can take the fight, but uh, Alistair is no slouch, you know. Alistair's been all over the world. He's been fighting. He's been in the fight game. He's been at the top of the fight game for nearly 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's been to it all. Um, so I can see him taking the fight easily as well. So, yeah, that's another 50-50 that's another fight for me. But those are the fights that you want to see. Oh, absolutely. I know. I'm excited for them. And I'm excited for your fight coming up on Glory 81, yeah. August 20th, fighting for the vacant light heavyweight championship. Luis, you get the last word here. Tell the people where they can find more of you. Shout out whoever you need to shout out. All that good uh, stuff. Yeah, just uh, follow me on uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere you can find me. I'm very active on social media. So uh, to all my fans, uh, yeah, I have, uh, I have. Uh, you can follow me on there. There's a lot of content coming your way. Uh, we have we have a, like a small docu I'm filming, so uh, in preparation for my fight, so you can see it on uh, Instagram. Yeah, Ooh, that's awesome stuff, Luis. <laughs> yeah, talk to you soon, eh? Yeah, talk talk to you soon, man. Take care.